Right, so I'm going to talk briefly about encrypting sensitive data for Puppet. Um, I just want to share a little bit about a project that I think makes it a bit easier than it has been before. Um, so first of all, why, why would you bother? Um, first of all, why would you bother wanting to encrypt sensitive data? Um, and I think that the answer to that is that sharing is caring. You actually want to give all of your developers access to your configuration management um, repo, ideally, so they can change, mod and change and modify it. But you most probably want to remain in control. You're a bit power crazy still. And, and so you, you don't really want the developers to have the passwords for your production databases. You don't really want them to be walking around with the private SSL keys for all, your, all of your servers on their unencrypted laptops. So there's a couple of different approaches to this that I was thinking about when I first started looking at this. Um, the first is that you could have two different repos, like a shared repo and another more sensitive repo, and you merge those together in different modules on the Puppet Master, uh, and that's kind of fine. Um, or alternatively, you can encrypt the sensitive data, keep it in the same repo, uh, and then on the Puppet Master, you have a private key that lets you decrypt those values at the time they get pushed out to the different servers. So. First stop, hire a GPG. Um, just out of interest, how many people are using hire a GPG? And, okay, fantastic. I, so I, when I first got around to doing this, I kind of it was something that's been on my to-do list for about two years, and I finally snapped about six months ago. And um, and the first stop was hire a G, GPG. Uh, it does exactly what we want. So you put all your passwords and SSL <laughs> keys into a hire a YAML file. You encrypt it with GPG, uh, and it solves the problem, hurrah, job done, let's get to the pub. Except for the fact that it's not exactly frictionless, because instead of being able to clearly see all of your keys and values inside your YAML file, you have encrypted garbage, and it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Encrypting the files is quite a frustrating experience. And finally, version control diffs, when anyone makes a change, <laughs> is about as useful as comparing two JPEGs of cats. So, um, a guy blogged about this on Dev Random, and uh, a little while later, someone replied going, oh, I, you know, I saw your blog, and actually, I've done something about it. And I saw this, and I found the, I checked out the project, and started hacking away with uh, one other guy who um, is also London-based on this guy who was in Chicago's project. And we did some rapid iterations on it, and we got to a point where we came up with something that's actually fairly slick and is a lot easier and solves a lot of the problems that we had before. So that brings us to higher YAML. And so what's a YAML? So eYAML as a concept is encrypted YAML. So you can mix plain properties in there. And you can also have other keys which are encrypted. So here you've got uh, a plain one. You can see me, obviously. Uh, and then there's an encrypted block here, which is demarcated by these square brackets and the en encryption and square bracket at the beginning. This is the encryption format that's being used in this particular case. You get PKCS7 um, for free. It just kind of comes with Hira YAML. But um, in the same way as Hira YAML is a plugin for Hira, Hira eYAML also has plugins that support other encryption types. So there's a GPG one, which we use here. And then the ciphertext itself is Base64 encoded uh, in that format. Um, yeah, so what can you do? So as well as getting some stuff that lets you decrypt this and encrypt it, um, there's a handy little command line tool that we built. And that makes it really easy to kind of look at the files and edit them. So for example, you could type eYAML decrypt hyphen etest.eYAML, which is the YAML file on the previous one. And out it will spit the decrypted version of the file. And you'll notice again, it's got a demarcation there, which showed you where it was encrypted previously and what format it was. Uh, and then it uses these square brackets and, and so on to demarcate it. If anyone ever tries to put close square bracket exclamation mark into their plain text, they're probably going to run into problems. But aside from that, it, it seems to work pretty well. <laughs> so you can also use it to edit. So there's an eYAML edit subcommand if on the same test.eYAML. That will throw you into Vim or whichever editor you've got set up on the command line. Uh, and that will show you the decrypted version, as we saw before. And if you want, you can add a new one. So to do that, you just kind of mimic the encryption format that, you get, that you've got there. 
Um, there's actually, if you notice, at the top there, there's a number on the one which was there before. It says decryption brackets one, close, close brackets. Uh, and that's to track them. So when you exit this and save, it knows which ones have actually been changed and which ones haven't. And that preserves your git diffs and so on, so you, you know very easily which values have actually been changed. So you throw a new property in there, uh, and then you do your write and quit. And if you cut the file again, you've got two encrypted values in there. It's really easy to use. It's almost as frictionless as using Vim. And if you, <laughs> bad example. Uh, and if you do a git diff, then you just get plus new encrypted property. It makes sense, it's really easy to read, it's really easy to kind of go back through um, all of your previous stuff. And, and it seems to work pretty well and people like it. So um, I wrote this plugin for it, Hyrule YAML GPG, which adds GPG functionality, uh, which was sort of a, a prerequisite here at The Guardian. Uh, <coughs> and, and I think the, the main challenge with GPG is the fact that you have to make sure that you are encrypting it to the right recipients when you re-encrypt it at the end of any edit. So in order to overcome that, uh, I introduced this idea of a high re YAML GPG recipients file. And you drop these into your Hyra stack, and it will look up the closest one, essentially. So when you save, it will use that to address, uh, the, uh, to address the encrypted contents of all of the, the different segments. So it's always the same recipients for each of the encrypted blocks within a single file. But different files in different parts of the tree can have different recipients if you need to. And provided that you have got your GPG agent set up, then actually like editing a file is as simple as doing eYAML edit, the name of the file, it'll open it up, decrypt it all, make the modifications, save it again, and you're on your way. So that's it. Um, there's more information if you just search for higher eYAML. Uh, let us know, pull request welcome. Thank you very much. Any questions before we take a break? Yes. When are you going to leave, let the developers accept the Git? Yeah, OK. I wasn't going to mention that, but thank you for bringing that up, developers. <laughs> um, what we, we kind of have a lot of passwords still scattered around our repo, and we need to make a concerted effort to actually convert them over and clean up the repo, and then, yeah, then open it up. Any non heckling questions? <laughs> Um, how do you uh, how do you then get the uh, the private key onto the server that needs to be encrypted? Right. So this is the same process as um, so. How, how do you how do you get the private key on? Sorry. How do you get the private key onto the Puppet Master? Yeah. It's a manual process. So there is a bootstrapping issue because if you put that into Puppet when you're building the Puppet Masters, you might. You could probably do it, but you'd need a Puppet Master running in order to decrypt it already. Uh, at the moment, I copy the key on manually. And that's um, in another one of our repos where we store lots of security stuff. There's just a tarball with the GPG key and so on that's required on the Puppet Masters. Yep. Um, on a developer's machine, will they see the um, unencrypted version? No, no, they wouldn't. So uh, developers would just see the, the encrypted blob. So I think <coughs> there's, there's some areas where we probably wouldn't bother encrypting stuff. So we, to be honest, only really care about the production stuff. Um, we have a lot less concern about anything else. Um, so in which case, you just leave it plain text. But, yeah, Graham. Did you look into the methods of storing the list of recipients? Like, is, that, is there a, a key server extension to store that? Uh, to be honest, no. I got it to do what I needed it to do within our environment, and then I stopped. Pull request welcome. <laughs> Is that it? Shall we stop and have Gareth? I was going to say, who in the room is using Hiri Yaml? Hmm, is anyone using it here? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, you, you're, you're in the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good. Um, you should pick it up. It's, it's had um, 4,000 4, or so downloads since we um, did the last release, so I think it's getting some traction somewhere. Brilliant. Thanks very much. We're going to take a short break, um, grab some more beer. Uh, there's, I think there's leftover pizza. Uh, and then we'll resume in five, ten minutes.